Welcome to Bringing the Word to You. I am your host, Minister Tim Greco, coming out of Omaha, Nebraska. We know how hard and difficult it is for some of you to get to church and Bible study, so we want to go ahead and bring the word to you. You know, God is a good God. God is good all, all the time. time and all the time. God is, good. God is good. All thanks to our personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. for the opportunity to teach his word, thanking him for taking us where we once were to where he has brought us to today. Today we have on the program three very special guests, my brothers in the Lord, Brother Randy, Brother Bobby, and Brother D. Arthur. I want to go ahead and start with um, Brother Randy. If you can please uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, Brother Randy. Brother Randy, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Brother Randy. Amen, Brother Bobby. My name is Bobby. Glad to be here today. Amen. Uh, I'm Reverend D. Arthur Davis. Ministry taking it to the street. Amen. Ministry of church with no walls, and I'm at Mount Olive Baptist Church, 2425 South 25th Street. Thank you very much. Hey Amen. You know, we just had an interruption right when the program started, and that's all about like raw TV, and that's all about ministry, and that's all about how it goes because the enemy does not like us sharing the Word of God. Amen. You know, we've done so many television programs by the grace of God, and I got some funny stories to tell you. There was one television program we did where I forgot to hit the record button on the camera. There was one television program I did where I forgot to turn the microphone on. So they contacted me and said, Tim, we got a problem. And that was like one of my favorite ones, too. Um, there was one where I had a dog, and the do my dog kept crawling under my desk and like biting my feet. So you can hear on the television program, I'm like trying to get my, so many funny things. It's just raw TV. So we had a phone ring before this started and it's real. It's real. It's just what happens. So with that said, I just want to turn it over to Brother Randy. Brother Randy brought us a verse. And as Brother Randy reads it and shares it, we'll jump into that and we'll kind of intertwine it with what we brought today. Yeah, I got it. Revelation 20, uh, page 15 and... Anyone not found written in the book of life was casted into the lake of fire. Hmm. Brother Bobby, I want to ask you, you know, about being born again, how we must be born again to see the kingdom of God. If we're not born again, we go into the lake of fire. If you could speak on that for a moment, and then we'll give it over to Brother DeArthur to jump into Matthew 24. Yeah, you know, it's a terrible thing to fall in the hands of the Lord, and he's made it real easy for us. You know, the word says that he doesn't want anyone to perish, anyone. And uh, it's real simple. You know, men complicate it sometimes. Maybe they have good intentions, but it's faith in Jesus. You know, we get real with him, and we tell him, hey, we're sinners. We failed you, and we've sinned against no one but you. Will you change me? Will you help me? Will you come live in my heart? And we believe that he lived a sinless life here for us and then died in our place. I mean, I can relate to that because I was around a whole lot of guilty people in prison, you know. <laughs> and uh, But you know what? He's, he's merciful and gracious. That's where he found me, mm -hmm. you know. And if he can save me, he can save anybody. Amen. Trust me. Amen. So that, it's just we get real with him, y'all, because he's coming. Amen. You know, Amen. he's coming. Amen. You know, Brother Bobby, Brother Randy, Brother DeArthur, when I first got saved, it was so hard for me to believe that the Lord would forgive somebody like myself. And when I was looking into Scripture, the Lord brought me to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, that Paul was writing, and he said, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the chief. And what was so amazing about this verse is it's in 1 Timothy, which is my name, in verse 115, which is my birthday, 115. Wow. Right. So the Lord was saying, if I can save Paul, if I can save you, whom the verse is in your name and in your birthday, I can save everybody. Right. So when Bobby said that, um, you know, Bobby, Randy, DeArthur, they've all come such a long way. And it's amazing how the Lord has been with us every step of the way. And just looking at you guys now from who you guys once were to who you guys are today, it's amazing what God can do. God just wants to take anybody and everybody, heal them, deliver them, set them free, polish them up, and say, look at what I did. That's what God wants to do for you. And so with that said, I want to turn it over to Brother D. Arthur. Well, one thing about God, he knows 
He calls us all the way from birth. He called us from childhood and he separated us. If we all look around, we have one foot in the grave and one foot on a banana peel. But it was by God's grace and mercy that he pulled us up out of the muck and the mile and the clay. And he tells us, no matter how low you get, I can get lower than that. Amen. Amen. So no matter how low I was or how low you are, God can get lower than that. Amen. He gets so low, he can get all the way down like a grain of mustard seed. Amen. Amen. And pick you up where you down. So I'm just trying to let you know this morning, no matter what you're going through, mm. uh, God is real. And that's why we're here today to let you know tomorrow is not promised to none of us. Amen. But we all have sinned and fallen short, and by the grace of mercy, Amen. he let us see another day. Amen. So why put off for tomorrow for what you could do today? Amen. And this morning, uh, scripture I brought to the group today is Matthew 24. Amen. And Jesus was in the temple teaching, and as he got out of the temple, the disciples wanted to know, uh, show us a sign, show us the future, show us what's going on, and you automatically, God knows what was going on. Mm. Amen. And he said, you've been with me this long, and you don't, you don't know? He said, I'll show you a sign every day. When you woke up this morning, he gave us a sign. Amen. Amen. He said in his word, it's going to be rumors of wars, earthquakes, mothers against daughter, fathers against son, uh, virus and uh, perilous times. Amen. Amen. And we live in that today. Today. We live in that today. So we got to get ourselves ready. Amen. Because time weighs on no one. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. That's powerful, Brother D. Arthur. You know, I like what you're saying because as I've been saying the last couple of weeks, it seems like every generation kind of had a right to say that, oh, this is the generation Jesus is coming back in. You know, you look at World War I, you look at World War II, could you imagine the fear that was going on in the world today? But even at 37 years old, I feel like there's something different about today. Mm -hmm. And the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same Holy Spirit that lives in those of us who are born again. And it's amazing how the same Holy Spirit in us here in Omaha, Nebraska, is in the same believer in Africa or Europe or Asia or anywhere, speaking the same thing to them that he's speaking to us. It's like, it's like we're all on the same telephone line. And it's just amazing. And what the Lord is weighing on my heart is, I'm coming. I'm coming, I'm coming. And Brother Bobby, you say it all the time. One of, the, one of my most favorite things about Brother Bobby is how, yes, he knows the word. Yes, he knows scripture. But he really emphasizes God is coming. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And you know, my brother, uh, DeArthur, was on uh, Matthew 24. And in verse 7, it's, he says, Jesus says, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Mm. He's not being redundant. That word nations, that it's ethnos, where we get ethnicity, right. race wars. I mean, we see that. It's wow. gotten real bad. Wow. In America, yeah. wow. you know, over politics or whatever, but none of that matters because Jesus is running things. He's still in the affairs of yeah. men, and it's going exactly like he said. And in 1948, the brother mentioned wars and all that, but in 1948, when Israel, God gathered his people back mm -hmm. like he said he would, everything's ready. The, the stage is set, y'all, for right. Jesus' return. Yeah. He's coming, and, and, right. and it's going to be to you. If you didn't get saved right now while you had the chance, it's going to be real hard for you to get saved when the Holy Spirit leaves because all hell's going to break loose, y'all. So today's the day of salvation. You can be in jail. You know, in some jails, the only channel they put it on is Christian. Mm -hmm. I hope somebody's watching. Amen. And, and that's wow. where I got saved, y'all. You know, God took me. And, 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 and look, now wow. I just want to tell people. So, you know, there's an urgency, you know, and it's just people like us. We're regular blue-collar workers, y'all, you know. But God is just play that spirit and it, it, it does, he's just saying tell people what I've done for you mm -hmm. because that seed is mm -hmm. not going to come back it's going to grow you Amen. know we have to do that we have to y'all it's you know God commissioned us to tell people amen brother Randy I wanted to ask you a very simple question you know uh we know the city of Omaha is very diverse you go uh south it's it's uh predominantly Latino you got north it's predominantly black they say West is predominantly white. I mean, it's very segregated. Is that what heaven's going to be like? No. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> there, there, there you have no. it. There, there gonna, you have no, it. That no, that ain't gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so, no. so we're all because we're all we're all gonna be believers out there. We're and, all God's children. We're all God's it children. Doesn't matter. I mean, look at us right now. We all come from different backgrounds. Right. We all serve the same God. One of my favorite things about going to church is loving on people, loving on everybody, but loving on people of different backgrounds. Like, I actually love going to churches that aren't all white because I walk in there to feel the love from somebody from a different ethnic background and to be able to love on them is the love of Jesus. And I, I, I really admire um, interracial marriages. You see, you know, a white with a black person or a Latino with whatever, whatever. I love that because what they're doing is they're able to set their differences aside, their skin color, their, um, their um, uh, cultures. Thank you. I was looking for that word. And they're able to just portray the love of Jesus. I love that. So with that said, I'll turn it back over to Brother DeArthur, maybe to dig a little bit further into, uh, into what we we're speaking about. Oh, Matthew 24, verse 1. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up to him, show him the buildings of the temple. Mm. And Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? Surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left unturned mm. on another, shall be uh, torn down. And what he's telling us, they build it each and every day around Omaha, Nebraska, all around the world. Mm. And Omaha have changed People come back from out of town, they look at Omaha, and Omaha have changed. But what about when you come and that old house you stay in don't stay there no more? It's not there no more. Mm -hmm. uh, that old school that you went to is not there no more. Mm -hmm. That's a change. And one thing about a change and a sign, no matter where you go, you're always looking for a sign. If you go to a basketball game, you want to know uh, who's playing. If you go to a concert, you want to know who's performing. Mm -hmm. And even when you go to church, you want to know what's in the bulletin. Is I'm going to be here too long? Amen. We all look for a sign. But the sign is we do not know the sign. We do not know the time when the Lord Jesus Christ will come back. He said, no man know the hour or the time when he come back. So it's very important that we get ready. And he's telling us in Matthew 24, the signs is every day. Yeah. The signs is every day. You know, we kind of like that old saying, and I ain't going to keep on talking, but it's kind of like monkey see, monkey do, and da, 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 da. And anybody could have did it, but nobody did it. Amen. <laughs> but today we out here doing it. Amen. Yeah. We want you to be saved. Yeah. And the Bible said, am I your brother's keeper? Yes, I am. I leave no one behind because when I was in the military yeah. if we left somebody behind we go back and get them right 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 no matter what kind of harm or danger it is right. the bible said if you had a hundred sheep and one go astray would you leave that 99 and go and get that one wow. yes that's what we're doing today wow. we all here trying to get that one it might be you it might be your sister your brothers or whatever that strayed away from the church and we coming for you amen Amen. We're coming for you, so get ready. Get ready. Amen. We're coming. Amen. You know, brothers, uh, the other day my mom was coming over to say hi, and my apartment was a little messy. So I started running around. I started picking some things up a little bit. I think I swept my kitchen floor a little bit before my mom got over. But the Lord was really speaking to me during that time. He was saying, if you're running around your apartment crazy like that because your mom is coming over, <laughs> What are you doing in your life knowing my son is coming to get all of you to go to heaven or go to hell? And, um, you know, I, I really like where I live because I'm able to sit in my living room in peace and quiet. And I'll sit in my living room in peace and quiet. You can hear a needle drop from down the street. And I just ask God all the time, Lord, reveal to me if there's anything I'm saying or doing anything wrong. Lord, show me what it is I can do differently in my everyday life. Lord, I, you know, I repent. I give thanks all the time, but really searching out your heart and getting your life in order because we need to be ready Amen. and we need to clean our house. And so the enemy tempts us. And anytime the enemy tempts me, I fear God. I am scared to go fall into that temptation. 
I'm scared that when I fall into that temptation, Jesus is going to come back. And that kind of goes into that once saved, always saved topic where I don't even play with it. If you say you're without sin, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. I'm not up here saying that I'm perfect because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's a difference between uh, slipping up occasionally, living in these sin-filled, corrupted bodies, but practicing sin, knowingly, purposely, intentionally living in sin. And I'm too scared to do that. Yeah. Brother, you know, I'm, I'm scared to do that. Yeah. And probably, you know, like I say, nobody knows, but if people, I've never met anybody personally that walked down the aisle and then left church and started living like the devil. I, I've never met them, but I'm sure they're out there. But yeah, we can't play with God. You know that, you know, people that have been through it. I, yeah, I, I, I know better. You know, I fail, I fail him daily, but I run to him because I need him. But here I am doing, trying to do his will. And you know, people are going to hate us because we stand for Jesus. And he told us in the same chapter right, my amen. brother's reading, he said, man, they're going to take you up and persecute you and kill you and think they're doing me a favor. You know, I know some people out there, that they'd be thinking they do a whole lot of people a favor. But you know, the, the thing is, is that the outcasts, the ones that people have given up on, that, that's who Jesus came for. That's who he was hanging around, the publicans and the sinners, whatever they want to call them. Hey, that's who he came for. And I used to say something, and it sounded a little harsh, but I'm going to share it because I know my brothers here would understand. If you talk to a member of your church any different than you talk to a, a homeless person, a prostitute, a drug addict, you're clueless to why Jesus came and who he came for. That's who he came for, the outcast. If you're afraid, that's cool. You can pray from a distance. But people like me, I, don't, I guess my brother, he's already got a street ministry. I'll go out there and talk to him. Hey, the worst they can do is kill me. They can do me a favor, send me home. But yeah. somebody needs to reach these people because it ain't, there ain't no homeless, uh, hopeless people. There, yes. There's no such thing. Everybody has hope. God can save everybody. Yes. And I forgot to mention earlier, but y'all check out my, my podcast. I have probably 45, 50 uh, episodes up now. On, uh, it's something for everybody. Yeah. It's called Jesus and the Outcast. And I keep it real and I keep it simple like this. I don't get in the Greek and the Hebrew every now and then if it's relevant. It really is going to open up the scripture. Yeah. But I just keep it real, man, because everybody needs to be sharing what Jesus done in your life because... You know, hey, time's running out. We're in the 11th hour, Amen. you know, Amen. and the people that, you know, think they're going to wait to the very end, they usually die at 1059. So wow. don't wait, y'all. Don't Amen. wait. We got to start sharing. Brother Bobby, can you say the name of that podcast one more time? Can you even spell it for those oh, yeah. who are listening? Uh, Jesus in the Outcast. Okay. It's uh, J-E-S-U-S and then and the Outcast. O-U-T. C-A-S-T-S, -S, that's plural, okay. Jesus in the Outcast. Anywhere you get your podcast, you can find it. Awesome. And uh, yeah, y'all check it out. Amen, amen, amen. say something, brother? Yeah, Reverend Tim, you know, all you have to do is say, my house is well lived in. That's it. <laughs> it's lived in. <laughs> my house is well lived in. Brother Randy, I want you to give a quick word of encouragement. You know, everybody out there that's struggling, um, are they good enough to come to Jesus? And what are some first steps they can take in their life to come to him as far as prayer and church and, and just coming after him? You are good enough. Yeah. Just come to church. Um, you'll see how, how positive it is. And it'll change your life. It, it will. And it's a good thing. Amen. It really is. It'll help you. Amen. Amen. With that said, I want to go in here to Matthew 24, verse 26, 27, and 28. Matthew 24, 26. I'm going to give it over to Brother DeArthur. The Word of God says, Therefore, if they say to you, Look, he is in the desert. Do not go out or look. He is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Forever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. You know, a relative of mine the other day was making fun of me about talking about how, um, you know, Jesus is coming back. He called me up and he said, where's this Jesus you're talking about coming back? And I felt so bad for him. I felt so bad for him. Yeah. Like, don't make fun. You can make fun of me all you want to, but to like ridicule God and to... 
deny Jesus is coming back. Where is this Jesus you speak of coming back? And man, he's coming. Oh, you've been saying that for, well, yeah, I have been saying that for a while because we're supposed to be ready. Right. What are you doing? Where are you going? Who are you hanging around? Be ready. And people are ridiculing and doing that blaspheming the Lord. Amen. Brother Tim, you remember, uh, you remember the book of when it was talking about Noah and the ark? We in there. We in the scripture anyway. And they talked mm. about Noah and the ark, and he was out there building that boat. Yes. And everybody was laughing. It don't rain. You know, selling T-shirts, barbecuing out there. <laughs> you know, laughing. And he's taking the animals in two by two, and he tell them, get right. Man. Come on. And then, come on in the building. It's going to rain, children. Wow. And they laughed, and they, they laughed. laughed. And that's the way it is today when we out there preaching the gospel, trying to get people to come to Jesus. They laugh at us. Man. They laugh at us. But you know, in the last days, huh? huh? When Jesus said, what have you done, huh? With that body that I gave you down here on earth, huh? What are they going to say? Man. Well, Lord, I was just waiting on you to come back. What about the brides? When he gave uh, the coins and all of that Man. to the people and they hid them in different places. Man. You know, they missed a blessing. Can yeah. you just imagine yeah. them knocking on the door? Let me in, let me in, let me in, uh, let me in. Give me another chance. Mm. Too late. Didn't Tim tell you? Too late. Huh? Didn't Bobby tell you? Too late. Didn't D. Arthur tell you? Yeah. Didn't they tell you? Yeah. That's powerful, D. Arthur here. And Jen. Yeah, no, one please one. keep going. But you know what he said? He said, yeah. when the word is preached, to all nations. Yes. Then he's coming. Yes. And the word is coming very fast. Yes. Technology is bigger than Big Brother. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. The gospel is going through fast. Don't matter what language you talk or where you come from, it's coming. Yes. Amen. Amen. I just want to quickly say we get over to Brother Bobby. I want to say in Genesis 6, or, or anybody that has something to say on it, Genesis 6, verse 3, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. See, God gave them many, 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 many years to get right. Amen. God, Jesus has not come back yet to this second to give people the opportunity to come to salvation. I was telling my relative, hey man, you're lucky Jesus has not come back right this second because he's still giving you an opportunity to repent and come to salvation and so that's just what I wanted to say here about how the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever. Yeah, that's true. We, we, we're all going to hear it. And even if they don't, you know, he says, look, you look around creation and see me. There's not going to be any excuse. And, and then Jesus says it over and over in, in Matthew 24. It's like, you know, if, if we knew when the thief was coming, you know, or look at the fig tree when she starts, you know, blooming. There are just so many things that we should know because I'm telling you, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to have this opportunity one day when that trumpet sounds and his church leaves. If you're not there with them, it's, it's man, it's going to it. be bad, you know, yes. and, and nobody understands. And, and, and people can say, yeah, well, and Peter, he talks about that. Well, people, scoffers are going to say, well, where's this coming you've been talking about? You know what? He's long suffering. You know, he doesn't want any to perish. And that's the main thing that, you know, he's he's so good. Anybody can live like a fool. I wasn't. I thought I was tough and all this, but you know what? Anybody can live like that, but it takes a real man to stand up, courage to stand up for the gospel. Because yes. like Tim was saying, hey, you know, my relatives, hey, I got relatives too. They look at me, oh man, he's probably trying to scam or whatever. Okay, I work for a living. I tithe and I just get by, but that's all I need. I'm not storing up riches here on earth. They're in heaven. Yeah. That's where I'm storing them up because he's coming. And we, and I'm a, now I'm a real man. Now I call myself a man because I stand for God, you know. Amen. I could care less what people think. Amen. This is what my life's about now. Amen. It's Amen. that simple. Amen, Brother Bobby. I want to give it to Brother Randy um, real quick. Brother Randy, do you have any last words of encouragement to anybody who's listening about how, even if they're struggling with something right now, they can call upon the name of Jesus? Yes, just call his name, ask for help. Um, step into the church. Um, kneel down and ask him for help. Amen. I will help you if you ask. Amen. 
Amen, Brother Bobby. Um, I wanted to ask you um, in one minute or less, uh, do you have any uh, words of encouragement to those who are listening? Yeah, you know, um, you, you got to talk to somebody. You know, if you're all alone, okay, you cry out to God, but you need to talk to somebody that, that, that's going to tell you the truth. You know, they're not just going to sugarcoat it or whatever because this is real, this is life. And if you'll study the word, if you'll ask him, if you ask the Lord, hey, show me, I want to believe in something, but I've heard so much or I've experienced this. No, he's not going to let you be deceived. He's not going to let you be led astray. Amen. If you have a pure heart and you're really seeking him, he's going to make himself known to you. Amen. So get with somebody. You can reach out to the brother. He just gave me his info and his ministry, and Amen. I'm giving him mine. Hey, there's you want to answer questions or whatever, or just somebody to pray with you or pray for you, Y'all reach out and watch Amen. God move because, Amen. hey, y'all, he loves you. He Amen. loves you, and he Amen. wants you part of the family. Amen. Uh, Brother DeArthur, Brother Bobby had mentioned something about materialistic things and just being content. Uh, we literally have uh, one minute or less. Can you just speak on um, the importance of chasing after G Jesus and being born again over materialistic things? And then please close us out with prayer. Well, he said in his word, he said, don't <laughs> store up all your treasures on earth <laughs> right. because of rust and the right. thieves will come and uh, take it. But the Bible said, for this day, who will you serve? Will Amen. you serve man or will you serve God? Amen. Remember, he's not, you're not looking for him. He's looking for you. And he said, I stand at the door and knock. Amen. And he's knocking on your heart right now to tell you to come on in. Because on, time is running out. Yes, so yes. we just want to give you this invitation. Yes. The Bible said, if you make your bed in hell, I'm with you. If you make your bed in heaven, I am also with you. So we're asking you to come to Jesus. Amen. Confess with your mouth. Believe it in your heart that Amen. the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ is your Savior. And you shall be saved. Amen. And then you find a church, a Bible-believing uh, church, and give your hand to God. Amen. 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 So I just want to thank each and every one of you. Amen. You can find Reverend D. Arthur Davis taking it to the street ministry on YouTube. Push that like button. Subscribe. We need your support. Amen. And at this here time, I want to thank you, Tim. Uh, thank I want to you thank guys. each and every one. Thank you, thank Let you, us thank pray. Let's pray. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for yes, what was said and what's done. Yes, now, Lord. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless this work. As it go out through the airways, yes, dear Lord, Lord, and whoever might have stopped by and listened for a little bit, a twinkling of this message that they yes, get Lord. saved, yes, that Lord. they find you. And Lord, those are pondering and trying to figure out what they're going to do with their life. Yes, let Lord. them know that you are waiting on them and you're not, they're not waiting on you. Yes, so Lord. I'm telling you, it's best to have Jesus in the boat yes, than Lord. be in the boat and don't have him. Yes, Lord. God bless you and keep you is my prayer in Jesus' Amen. name. And once again, as Tim said, if no one told you today that they love you, I love you. And God Jesus loved you too. God bless you. Amen. Hey, thanks, Brother Randy, Brother Bobby, Brother DeArthur. We love you guys. In Jesus' name, let's go. Amen.